Soldering expert. Are you? Are you? Are you? Boundless technology continuous advancement. So, I have gone through approximately 74,000 of these. Maybe it'd be easier if I took this box off. These. These. Oh my god, focus. Okay. I did a video on one. It might be. Oh my god. Focus. Anyway, I did a video on one of these. It's probably somewhere up there, or there, one of the two. I did one of these videos, and it these have worked really well. And honestly, like the price of these is so minimal that, especially as you're getting started with something, they are a great option. They were still way better than, you know, soldering iron and a manual pump. Like, hands down, do not regret. But... I am serious that I've had maybe four or five of these now. And uh, now it's it's at the point where I could have purchased something nicer before. Now, I want a Hako. I do. I do. But am I ready to commit to that level of cash? Maybe. I was about to pull the trigger. And on one of the discords I frequent, I'm like, hey, do you guys recommend anything or is Hako the right answer? Always. And somebody was like, hey, I've got the Hako. It's okay and i go okay okay is a lot <laughs> it's a lot of money for okay and they're like yep well shoot okay so what i did instead of the hako is i went with something uh it seemed kind of okay and i will try kind of okay and see how that goes and worst case i used my good friend amazon and I got myself an extended warranty. And I've got 30 days to return it if it's terrible. And so I figured, instead of screwing around with it, I'm going to turn on the camera. <gasps> Pearl later. I'm going to turn on the camera. And I'm going to take you along for the ride. With our advanced desoldering system. Are you? Are you? Are you? So there's an instruction manual. This is coming through SRA Soldering Products. They are not sponsoring this video. I bought this. With my own minimal money. They have other tools. They are demonstrated here. And I've got a heating element compatibility chart. So you can get spare parts. That is a plus. That is a plus no matter what manufacturer you have. The manual here is, like, you know, it's, it's got some pages to it. So what I was kind of trying to figure out is the maintenance that's going to be required. Because one thing that I think I've been failing at with those other solder suckers is I have not been maintaining them well. But I would also argue that the instructions for maintaining them are what I have been doing. But I do feel like there's something missing. So there's a separate power unit and uh, vacuum gun itself. So they are separate, unlike the Hako FR301. Uh, but let's see, just to be clear here, we're checking the temperature with an external temperature sensor to make sure that it's working. It's five to six minutes. Uh, optimum temperature is five to nine minutes, which is fine. This means I have to prepare. Um, ensure that all the sol solder is melted before triggering the pump. Partially melted solder will still be sucked up. It will clog the barrel. Good to know. Upon pressing the trigger, hold for one to two seconds longer to make sure that everything goes into the filter. Clean the filter and dampen the sponge frequently during and after usage to allow better suction power. I feel like nothing up here said to dampen the sponge. The sponge is right here. 
I don't know. Uh, to deactivate the desoldering gun function, press and hold the function button for three to five seconds. How about maintenance? Filters should be cleaned and replaced regularly. Before usage, dampen the filter pads with a little bit of water to allow efficient air passage and filter action. Redampen pads frequently for maximum efficiency. Ret routinely clean spring filter and replace pads when they are dirty or clogged. Reuse use the nozzle cleaning pin to uh, clean the nozzles naturally. It includes instructions on changing everything, so the filter pad and spring filter, the heating element, how to clean the desoldering tip, and some troubleshooting. Okay, this is already better than all the cheap ones that I've found. Holy guacamole, that's big. I know that's hard to see on here, but um, you know, frame of reference here, this is not quite like a normal sheet of paper, but that is pretty much a sheet of paper. And it's big, chonk and honkin' thing. So, and chonk and honkin' is absolutely a word. So in our accessory unit, we got our nice holder, power cable, filters and accoutrement, and the gun itself. Chonker. <clears throat> so I guess SPA is the importer. So we got, you know, some marks on the unit from it being placed into packaging. On the back here, you can probably see my serial number which, you know, I guess, whatever. Uh, so we've got where the power goes in. We have a fuse here, big honking power switch. Um, can you see this, maybe, possibly? So unit was passed in November of 2022. It is currently almost November of 23, so this thing's already about a year old. On the front of the unit, this right here. Mm, interesting. So that's our vacuum. Here's our gun, temperature control, and we've got, you know, your standard protective covering, which I don't see any reason to pull off right now. So, otherwise, like, nice and hefty. Like, Remove shipping screw marked red at bottom of the station before turning it on. May damage the station. Well, that's... I hope it's a Phillips. It is. Okay. Get some stuff hooked up. So over here we have the desoldering gun itself. And the cable coming off of it has a connector for uh, the power and then the vacuum tube itself. So in theory, That would be here. You know, I used to like working on cars. This is starting to feel very familiar. All right, so there's that.
So now, let's take a look back here. We've got the gun here. And then, let's put together the holder. Got a holder. I assume there is also a base. A bunch of other tools here. We've got a power cord. Does the holder go in the side? Okay. Well, I think we're at a point where we can turn this thing on. So I'm gonna turn it on. But first, I'm gonna plug it in. You big goof. Remarkably pistol like. So inside here we have our spring, we have a filter. So this is all set up and ready to go. So I'm going to put it back into place here. Maybe. It's locked up. Turn it on. So it defaults to off. Four seventy eight. Four seventy eight. What? I feel like we want like 350, maybe? I suppose it depends on what we are desoldering. Whew! One thing that you cannot find and cannot tell is that this stinks. While this is heating up, what we do have in this package we have uh, this round bit here, which I'm not sure what it is yet, but I will find out soon enough. Uh, we do have some additional filters, additional rubber grommet, additional spring, cleaning pin, a few additional tips, which is handy because it's always like the first thing to go. What are you, round thing? A suction and vacuum cover. Well, that's helpful. So we're gonna come back when this is heated up. I'm gonna go find a junk board to play with. So, crap board. Uh, this is a broken Terrible Fire 534, which with some scratched up traces, but a few components left on the board that we can probably pull off. Uh, again, if you are familiar with the 534, you know its size, and you can see that it is quite a bit smaller than this freaking unit. So, this is what we have to work with. Um, I think, Maybe to get an idea of what we got to work with here, I'm going to start with just these pins. So on the bottom is this, you know, 68,000 connector. So let's just kind of see what happens here. What I am going to do is hope that I know how to work this. So the instructions were to go ahead and place this on, allow the solder to melt. Oh. My assumption here is that in reality, I kind of want to just check the heat here with some solder. I'm going to run it. That's kind of cool. And then let's actually try it on an actual part. So what I'm going to do is maybe let's zoom in.
best I can right now. And let's just see what happens. Place it on the part. Let it melt. Pull. Let go. So, kind of hard to see here. I wonder if I can make it happen. So, I don't think you can see here, but right there, that is a clean part. Let's see. So, I think you can see it right there. Clean part. I'm going to try on the other side here. Maybe something a little smaller. Not completely broken loose, but that's pretty impressive. Kind of a fan. I'm going to try this little tiny IDE connector as well, just to kind of get an idea here. So one thing that could probably benefit this is the addition of some solder. It's also possible that I need more temperature, but let's just pretend for a second. So a little bit added. This is tricky to maneuver. I've got too much stuff in a small place, so obviously this is not going to be its home on my workbench. But now with a little bit melted on there, I should be able to melt and pull. Yeah, that's much better. Melt. Melt. Pull. Put it back. So as you can see, it does do a reasonable job. Uh, but it's going to take me a little bit to really dial this in. But all in all, not bad. So the question is, is it worth it? That's not really going to be the point of this video. Uh, the unit itself seems solid. Um, we're going to have to use it a little bit before I can really determine how well this thing works. Once I cool this down, um, I'm going to check out the filters. We're going to see where, where we land. Uh, but for now, I think we're good. See you all soon. Are you?